Hey you guys, it's Erica here from Minding Business and I am so excited to be back. So I'm calling this the first episode of season two. And I'm doing that to kind of cover my behind because, because I talk about consistency so much and I know I've been off for months before putting out another video, but you guys, I've been so crazy busy. Business has been insane. Um, I took on a board seat uh, at a nonprofit, which I'm really, really excited about. And just everything, you know, I'm a mom and a wife. So I'm back. I'm excited. I have some really, really good videos planned for you guys. But for this first video, I thought that it would be a good idea for me to start it off with our biz talk Q and A because I know that you guys like those a lot. So I did ask for people to send in their questions. Um, my I have a different setup right now for my office. This is just a temporary office, so work with me. Um, but I did ask people to send in questions, business related questions that they may have. Um, and I got I got a good amount. And so if you are wondering how do I send in questions for the next Q&A, uh, I usually ask for the questions to be sent in via Instagram. So um, I typically just put a story out and just ask for questions to be sent via DM. So if you are not following me on Instagram yet, follow me at mommy CEO. We'll put that some da somewhere down here or up here or over there somewhere, but mommy CEO um, on Instagram. And the next time I ask for questions, I typically kind of try to go through the questions that I get, especially if I get a lot of questions. And I kind of try to pick um, at least one question from uh, different areas of business so that I can hopefully help as many people as possible. So today I'm going to answer a total of four questions. Um, and I hope that I am able to um, assist at least a handful of people, but I would really like to assist more. So anyways, let's jump into it. The first question that I have is, do you know anything about the new PPP or Paycheck Protection Program loans? I think that last P stands for program. Um, and I, I know a little bit about it. So um, what I'll tell you is what I've learned through reading um, and through being on um, a Reddit forum uh, and kind of just from firsthand experience because we have uh, recently applied for the second round uh, PPP for my business. So um, there has been, there are a lot of misconceptions out there and I think you know, if you go on different websites and you're getting the information from these various websites, there is a lot of conflicting information, especially for people who did receive the first uh, PPP loan for their business. And basically the Paycheck Protection uh, Program loans are for anyone who has employees on the payroll. I think that there are some other um, some other people who qualify as well if you have a business, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, for me, I have employees and um, so we did apply for and receive the first Paycheck uh, Protection Program loan, PPP loan, and that was back in um, spring of last year. I want to say it was like April. Um, and so now that we have um, the opportunity to submit for another paycheck protection loan, um, we have recently done that. So to give you guys an idea, there's a bunch of information floating out there. One of the main pieces of information that I really want to touch on right now is I've read on many different websites um, and forums where it says that they are requiring you to be able to prove that you've had um, a decrease in revenue from any quarter of 2020 in comparison to that same quarter of 2019. So for example, they want you to be able to show if you had a decrease of at least 25% in revenue from let's say quarter one, quarter two, or quarter three or four from 2020 and 2019, you have to be able to prove that. 
Well, now on the forms and on the websites, it says that you have to submit documentation to prove that during the application process, but that is not true. So um, when we filled out our application, it did ask us if we had experienced a revenue loss of at least 25%. It is a self-certification and you will have to provide documentation if you um, decide to do a uh, loan forgiveness for the second loan. So that does not mean you guys go out there and lie to these people and tell these people that you had a revenue loss and you really didn't just because you're trying to get money because at the end of the day, this is still a loan. So um, my advice to you is if you did not or if you do not qualify for this PPP loan to sit tight because there are people talking and I've heard many different things about there possibly being a second EIDL um, loan or grant, I'm sorry, available for small business owners. And I think we're going to find out more about that during the week of uh, January 18th, 19th. Uh, so I'm excited to learn more about that as well, but that is what I know right now. Also, if you have not, if you did get that first PPP loan and you have not requested forgiveness, you can do so, but um, a lot of lenders are advising small business owners uh, to wait for a little while because there is so many different uh, new developments and new uh, direction coming out from the SBA. Um, about how this will go and how you can request the, the loan forgiveness. So I would uh, reach out to your lender and ask them if there's any information about it. There are some uh, forms that you can fill out that they make it pretty easy, some streamlined forms on the lender's websites. You can also go to sba.gov and find out more information. Um, as far as the PPP loan, if you do use a provider like ADP or Intuit to um, process your payroll, they have some really good programs. And um, if you go to your um, the platform that you use, you should be able to print out like a CARES um, complete packet that has everything you need to submit with your application for your second round loan or with your application for your loan forgiveness. So I hope that this helps. I'm not going to touch on things that I do not know about because I don't want to give you the wrong information. And I do not want you guys to take everything that I'm saying here. And if you find out something has changed, hold me accountable. Don't because I cannot help that they are releasing new information literally like every day, every week. And I don't think anyone really knows what is going to happen and what's going to come next. So go out there and really just ask your lenders um, and, and kind of pay attention. And, and I would go to lenders and SBA.gov before um, really finding this information on forums and uh, blogs because sometimes the forums and blogs um, it's, it's a lot of word of mouth. So when you're dealing with uh, federal loans, grants, all of that stuff, especially when we're talking about business, um, I would really want to get like legit information. All right, number two, uh, suggestions on how to recover from the 2020 slump um, and the loss of customers and business. So, um, you know, it, I think 2020 taught us all a lot and hopefully we can take those lessons that we learned and apply them moving forward, especially as a business owner. Um, for, for us, 2020 was, we actually saw an increase in revenue because we are an e-commerce business. But of course, you know, we lost a couple of employees and then we had to rehire. Um, so what we had to do was pivot. We were supposed to release a couple of new products last year and we were not able to release those. We had to focus really on the products that we did have and pivot from the way that we sold. We had to try and be as transparent as possible with our customers. So um, our shipping times were really delayed. And if you have a recent stork bag order, you may be like, I haven't had my order ship and I ordered like three or four days ago. We typically ship between two and three days, but we are delayed because we have so many orders going out and not as many employees due to COVID-19. So um, to answer your question, I would suggest you going in and trying to pivot the services or products that you're offering. You may have to scale back on some of the stuff. You may have to focus on just the products that you know are selling. You may have to market in a different type of way, but above everything else, be as transparent as possible with your customers so that they know, hey, look, you know, 2020 did this to my business or 
you know, the sale, I'm sorry, the, um, the shipping may be delayed or my response may be delayed. Whatever you need to do, make sure you're staying on top of it and letting your customers know because that's going to be really important for building your customer loyalty and making sure that they continue to shop with you. Believe it or not, a lot of people are shopping with small businesses more. So my advice, like I said, would be to try and pivot your services and to make sure you're staying as transparent as possible with your consumers. Um, number three, best ways to market when you're on a budget or you just don't have the money for it. I've been there. I think most small business owners have been there. Um, I honestly, anytime I do consultations, I really advise, uh, influencer marketing. I think that influencer marketing is one of the best ways to market your product on social media. Um, and I think that influencer marketing is for us is a little better than us spending so much money on um, these campaigns uh, and running these campaigns through social media because influencer marketing allows us to get our product into the hands of our customer. Um, of the, the customer who we're really trying to aim toward and make sure that what we're doing is really going to pay off. And it's easier for us to do that because if we're looking at an influencer, typically we don't go after influencers who have a ridiculous big following. Um, and that's not anything against those influencers. I know that they, they make a living by really promoting and uh, sponsored posts. But we typically um, we typically connect and build relationships with influencers who have maybe a smaller following but a large engagement. So when we go on social media, we're doing research and we're looking for when they post a video or when they post a picture, um, what type of engagement are they getting? Is it just likes? Is it likes and comments? Are the comments um, comments that we feel um, are more than just an emoji, but you know, maybe asking, hey, where did you get this? Or, oh, I'm going to shop there. You know, those types of comments, you wanna pay attention to those. You also want to pay attention to the sponsored posts that the influencer does. So if you have a product similar to um, what this, this person has already posted or done a video about, pay attention to the engagement there. If you do have a product that is very, very similar to what they've already done, I would not go with them because it's very, it's a very competitive Competitive landscape. What I would try to do is I would try to find the influencer who um, who is I in an ideal um, person within your your target market and talk to them and see what you all can do as far as being creative. You don't always have to offer money. A lot of times you offer free product, free services, and maybe you offer the influencer um, a special code. And so um, there's an incentive with this code because the people that shop using that influencer's code would get a discount, but then that influencer might get a kickback from the sales as well. So there are a lot of different ways to get around this, but you want to make sure that you are doing your research on the influencers and you don't always necessarily need to go after the influencers who have millions of followers. A lot of times, a lot of the influencers who have maybe 10, 10,000, um, 20,000, 100,000 followers, they're a little uh, more easily accessible and they're gonna work with you a little more, especially if you're a small business who's just starting out, who does not have a large uh, spend budget. So really, really consider influencer marketing. I love influencer marketing. I think it's building relationships and it's way more personal than it is if you just put an ad out on Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Um, all right, number four, how do I know when it's time to close the business? I haven't been active on social media like I used to be and no one is asking about it. It stresses me out to think about the business and I no longer have motivation. So that happens, that happens, especially when you lose customers, you're not getting business. Um, but like I said in one of my previous videos, when you're starting a business, it has to be a passion project. It has to be more, it has to be about more than just money because what typically happens is when you start to lose business or when you're not getting people into that door, whether it's a virtual door or brick and mortar, um, you lose the motivation because it wasn't really a passion project. It was about something else. So you want to go back to what am I good at? What do I like doing? And how can I monetize that? 
Um, I think you know when it's time to close the business when you don't have the motivation to do it anymore. It's kind of like working at a dead end job that you really don't like, but you keep on going because you're trying to make money. When you're starting a business, when you're a business owner, you really don't want to have that same slump. You want to be doing something that you love, something that you will do even if you're not getting paid for it. Um, because that's really what's going to keep you going during times like these. Uh, so I would say it's probably time for you to re-examine what your business is. Now, you said something like no one's asking about it, even though I haven't been on social media. Oh, well, you know, um, I, I, I find a lot of times when people who are business owners on their personal social media pages, when they post their personal pictures and fun pictures and cute pictures, they get way more engagement than when they post their businesses and products and they're trying to um, let people know about it. That is because that's just how it is. Just because, you know, your friends and family aren't saying, hey, you know, what's going on with your business doesn't mean you need to close it. So if that would be the only reason, I would say don't close that business. Um, but if you do not have the motivation, maybe it is time for you to consider. Um, it may not even be closing the business. It may be going back to basics, basic scaling back and trying to see why did I start this and really focusing on that. Um, I hope this these these uh, answers helped you guys with these questions. Um, like I said, follow me on social media at mommy CEO. Thank you guys so very much for watching my first video of season two. Let me let me have this, guys. I know I haven't posted in months, so this is this is season two. This is like this is like Game of Thrones when they go away for like three years and then they used to come back with a season and we were so giddy. Just just be happy. Um, I have a lot of really fun videos planned for you guys, so I hope that you really enjoy them. Um, you know what I'm going to say? If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you comment, you subscribe, tell people about it, share, follow me on social media at Mommy CEO, and you can send me DMs of questions that you may have. Go back and watch some of those videos from season one um, and let me know if you have any questions on those too. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.